Fantasy Easter Edition 2015 Tournament Day 2. We're into our quarterfinals. Of course, Jab being the first to advance to our semifinals, beating Dog in our first quarterfinal. And we're going to head into our second match up coming in just a few seconds. It's going to be Height versus Chucky. I'm Calum Leslie, your host with me, TJ Azuma QT Sanders, to cast these matches. TJ, we are uh, five matches down, three to go in this marathon day of Hearthstone. It is a marathon, yeah. We've been going at it for probably about, what, it's six hours now? And we still have three best of fives left to go. So uh, we still have a lot of action left. Um, Hyped is up next. Tempo Storm's Hyped. And uh, we saw him yesterday with some uh, really impressive play. And the only variation of Malagos Freeze Mage that we've seen thus far uh, in the tournament. So that's really exciting to see. And then, of course, there's Chalky. Big Sock Chalk is uh, playing the Priest. Um, <laughs> never thought that I would see Chalky play Priest. Back in the day, I think I remember. This is almost a direct quote. Um, he said, like, I would rather kill myself before play, playing Priest in a tournament setting. And this was like a year ago when, <laughs> when he was playing in the, the King of the Hill tournaments and stuff when he was known for just playing face hunter all the time and BMing players, <laughs> which was, oh man, that was the, the chalk that I grew to know and love. But these two are two of my favorite players, uh, at least in, in North America. So I'm really excited for this next match. And I don't even know who I'd be rooting for if I wasn't, if I didn't have to be a, an unbiased caster. So, Well, uh, you do also know Hyped very well. Obviously he's your co-caster in the ESL Legendary Series. George Hyped Magazzini as you constantly refer to him by his full name. Uh, tell us a little bit about Hyped, for those who didn't see the games yesterday. Tell us a little bit about his play style, how he go approaches the game. Uh, Hyped, one of the uh, uh, best rogue players, I'd say, <clears throat> in the world at the moment. He was one of the innovators of Oil Rogue when it first came out. Him and Dog were, were two guys, at least in, in uh, the Americas, who were um, making big strides and working to uh, refine Oil Rogue as a deck. Um, Freeze Mage, uh, he also was one of the players that popularized the, the Giants Mage, a Giants version of Freeze Mage a, a while back. So he's very familiar with Freeze Mage as a whole. And yesterday we saw him bring out the Malagos in the Freeze Mage, which can do some really ridiculous combos. You bring out Emperor Thorsan, if you only, if all you reduce is just Malagos and a couple of your burn spells in your hand, you can make 30 plus damage turns relatively easily with, with that Malagos. So uh, it, it's not quite as the combos aren't as consistent, but just adding in Malagos as one single card in a deck where every other card pretty much stays the same, just finding room for it is actually not that big of a sacrifice, and it's really cool to watch. Uh, on the other hand, Chalky, oh man, Chalky took him three tries yesterday to take a win with the priest after going up 2 0. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say just to uh, you know ad address the controversy, uh, we took some shit on Twitter from Chalky. For, uh, for being mean about his Priest deck. Um, I, I maintain that I don't think Priest... I think... I don't, I'm not saying necessarily the deck is bad. I'm saying it's not as good a pick in Conquest as many other classes. I think it's probably like the 7th or 8th class I would pick. I think. And and that's that, I'm leaving it to last as well, I think, is problematic because you then don't have any other... You don't have a lot of flexibility left. But Shaggy is actually going to open on the priest this time, which I think is a better strategy if you're bringing that priest to get a win with it. I think I, I do like this approach better if you're going to bring priest. I don't think this is really an, a strategical approach from Shaggy, as it is just he wants to get it out of the way as quick as he possibly can. Um, he wants to try and sneak a win early so he doesn't have to deal with it later on. Now, it's going to be really tough for Shaggy to get a win with this priest because you look at Hype's lineup. It's almost tailored to just destroy priests. He's got Freeze Mage, destroys priest. Oil Rogue, dumps on priest. Druid, doesn't necessarily dump on priest, but definitely has the potential, especially with an early board and a, a, a heavy ramp to start with Wild Growth, or even just an early pilot of Treader could sometimes shut them out of the game. So, well, funnily enough, that's going to be what Hype is going to start on. So it's going to be Druid versus Priest. <laughs> Hyped versus Chalky. Chalky, these two players again ready. His best chance of winning this tournament or this uh, series is to win this first game. If Chalky doesn't win this first game, he's going to have a lot of trouble taking the series. 
Absolutely. So uh, as we get ready for this game, Height versus Chalky, our second quarterfinal. The winner of this game plays Jab tomorrow in our semifinals. Of course, we're going to be back tomorrow at uh, 2.30 uh, my time, I believe. So that's, I think that's 3.30 Central European time. Uh, we're going to be starting off tomorrow, which is a little bit later for you. I think it's 6.30 rather than 5.30 for you tomorrow. The sun still isn't out, and if the sun isn't out, then any time feels like the same time. <laughs> And, and okay. also, uh, Kingwin, of course, the Kingwin Pro League is moving to um, Tuesday and Wednesday instead of uh, uh, Tuesday and Thursday. So uh, make sure you check that out uh, next week with the, the new times. And it, it seems like that's going to be what the Pro League is going to be for the weeks coming forward as well. Yeah, is, that's uh, going to be the new Wednesday. times. 6 p.m. on Tuesday, 6 p.m. CET, Tuesdays and Wednesdays with Noxious and Lothar for the uh, biggest league in Hearthstone, so make sure you're checking that out. There's so much Hearthstone going on in Kingwin right now. No one is putting on as much Hearthstone as Kingwin. I think that's pretty yeah. much a fact. I'm sure the guys at Kingwin are probably getting tired of Hearthstone because of how <laughs> much Hearthstone they're actually producing, but uh, it's really great to see how involved they're getting with, um, with our lovely community. Absolutely. So you can see the game here. Uh, it's going to be the Druid versus the Priest, like we said. Uh, priest on the coin. Which is not bad. I Means it's gonna have some options in the early game. Um, what are you only getting for if you're the priest in this matchup? Bodies. You want bodies because the what, the way the druid's gonna beat you is if they have board early on. Uh, and actually, mulligans everything in a way, and I like this. <clears throat> only card that I would th <clears throat> that I might think about keeping <clears throat> would be um, Trickmeister. Yeah. Just to have something to throw out on turns one or two. Uh, his hand is actually super weak. Yeah. He doesn't even have anything to play until, well, coin turn three. And by that time, the Druid might be able to ramp up, but... Mm. Actually, this is a pretty bad hand for the Druid as well. <laughs> no wild Double swipe, right. Savage Roar, Wrath, Keeper of the Grove. These are all not useful cards to play straight up. Yeah. The strongest opening that a Priest can, can have against Druid, and against most classes, is Northshire Cleric into uh, Blade Master Circle of Healing. Um... That is one of the ways that a priest can run away with the game against the druid. Uh, but if a priest is passing turn for this many turns, sometimes you can get to a point where the druid is playing creatures that just are a little bit out of reach of some of the combos that priests can pull off. Uh, Pilot Shredder, tough to deal with. Druid of the Call, really tough to deal with. Um, but we'll have to see because Chalky does have some pretty fancy stuff going on. One card that I've not seen from Chucky's Priest in the, the games we saw yesterday that I think is a little bit surprising is the uh, the Dark Cultist. Don't oh, yeah. really saw no, that a lot of priests are cutting. Days. A lot of priests are, are, are cutting Dark Cultists, I think. Um, this priest that Chucky has been playing around with, uh, I talked about a little bit yesterday, but he was calling it Mind Control Priest or something of that variation. He actually had a really high win rate with it when he was playing on a stream the other day. And, he was joking about becoming a, like, he's like, oh, I'm going to become a priest player. And, uh, yeah, it, it didn't have Dark Cultists. And I've seen a couple other streamers playing around with, with no Dark Cultists. So, um, this doesn't feel great. Keep with the Grove to, to the face. Two damage to the dome. But he needs a body on the board. Or else he's going to fall behind. So. Yeah, it's such a weak use of Keep with the Grove. It's really disappointing. <laughs> but again, what can, what can Chuck even do? I mean, he can... Blade Master Coin Hero Power is probably his best bet to get a body on the board. Hmm, Hawk and I. Interesting. I'm not sure about that. No, I like that play. Because you, you have to deal with... If an Hawk and I is played on the board, you have to deal with it right then and there. Um, and turn 5 is usually a big power play for Druids. It's usually a play where they either uh, intervene out Ancient of Lore... Uh, play Sludge Belcher, Druid of the Claw, or Lotheb. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and that's the, the, those are the power plays. By playing this on turn four, you're putting a body on the board and you're interrupting those big power plays from the Druid. You're forcing him to deal with that that uh, Alcanine Soul Priest now. Let's say he plays Lotheb. Next turn, uh, Chaki could just pick the Lotheb <clears throat> and trade in the Alcanine Soul Priest, which you're trading up. Uh, you're using extra mana, but you're trading up in that that scenario, um, or Shadow Madness, and throw that throw it in. So you're basically two for one. Um, so he's not going to have be able to deal with it, but he sort of needs to put a body on the board. And if he's going to, Druid of the Claw would be the best one because Sludge yeah. Belcher would get traded into. No, 
charge mode. Okay. <laughs> Best of both worlds. Puts a body in the board, yeah. and he deals with it. Shadow Madness does clear the board. So that's an option. Does he want to use it? Coin. Um, Cabal Shadow Priest is also a play, but taking a, a weakened um, Keeper of the Grove is not the best. But Keeper of the Grove is usually the only Cabal Shadow Priest target that you can reliably steal against Druid. Mm -hmm. The one thing that would change his mind is he does have Shrinkmeister. Uh, so he could take something like a Sludge Belcher or even like a Druid of the Claw later on in the game with that combo. Yeah, I think he definitely wants to save the Cabal for that sort of thing. I think I think Shadow Madness is probably the best of a bad bunch of plays here. Yeah. Shadow Madness, throw out the Northshire Cleric. You have enough cards in your hand, so even if it gets dealt with the following turn, you're still okay with that. You keep the coin to be able to play a turn 7 Cabal Shadow Priest uh, Shrinkmeister play, if you so choose. That's a pretty great turn 6 pickup for ta for, uh, for Hyped, Toshley. We saw this in his Druid yesterday. It's probably the only only player I've seen playing that card recently in tournaments, but it's certainly very popular that 7 health is a good spot. It's not the greatest spot against uh, Priest because it is susceptible to Shadow Word Death, but I guess it's another target for Shadow Word Death. So. Yeah, Sylvanas, good. Sylvanas given play here. No, there's not really anything else that you can do. Uh, it, it matches the uh, the Toshley pretty well. Yep. He's looking at the reversing switch here. Yeah, he could reversing switch and trade into the Sylvanas and basically make it even, which I would be perfectly okay with because then he can follow it up with um, Pilot of Shredder. But if you Pilot of Shredder's coin, Shrinkmeister, Cabal, Shadow Priest, the dream. Pilot of Shredder is a pretty good, pretty good pickup. Pretty, pretty good. good priest. It's one of the best. It's one of the best. What? Like yeah. the only other, like the best targets would be like a Twilight Drake, like a 10 health Twilight Drake. Um, Druid of the Claw in top form is really great. Um, Spectral Knight. Pilot Shredder, though, is definitely one of the best. Yeah, he's going to go for the reversing switch here. I think this is pretty safe. Because you just know that Sylvanas is going to get traded into that Tosh thing. Chucky is just churning in his boots right now. He knows that the Priest plays are about to get real. Now... Hype doesn't realize this, but if he had used the Whirling Blade spare part on the Pilot Shredder, he would have saved himself from the yeah. uh, Cabal Shadow Priest That's play. never something you think about. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Hype is pretty disappointed. Hype is a player that doesn't really show that much emotion. Uh, even when he gets uh, top decked to hell and back, Hype never really uh, is phased by much. He's a very emotionless player, very stoic. Indeed, he is. But yeah, stony faced, you could say. Yeah. Chucky's kind of the same as well, actually, just as that <laughs> kind of always considerate Maybe. face. I think uh, Dignitas has sort of whipped Chucky into shape a little bit, uh, sort of toned him down. Because um, back in his uh, mana grind days, he was a very controversial player. <laughs> Uh, he was very, he was the guy that would spam emotes and put, spend all his mana on a turn that he had, that he has lethal only using two. Um, but long, long gone are those days. He's well, sort of you say that, but. He sort of solidified himself as a, as a household Hearthstone name. Wow, the Savage War to kill the bombs. Oh, and that actually works out quite nicely because none of his creatures yeah. die. And he's able to trade really easily. Oh, Vitality this. Tilton. I don't know how great that is. It's not great in this matchup, but often Vitality Tilton. Yeah, there was is that, that matchup at Z-Story Cup that uh, was actually won because of a Vitality Tilton. Exactly. It's, uh, yeah, Vitality Tilton keeps, keeps you alive in some pretty crucial matchups in games like Hunter. It really can be a, a great thing to come off a pilot and shredder. It's not so good in this matchup. Um, unless you can get Northshire out. Well, even then, it wouldn't matter. No, that's true, because he heals face. Gah. Don't see the card often enough to understand how it actually works. <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen not, not that impressed with Golden Vitality Totem, either. 
It looks very sad. Yeah. Very sad totem. Most of the totems are actually very sad or very angry. Um, but this is a this is a really awkward turn here. Um, swipe hero power cleans up everything. Um, but if he, if that's the case, then he really doesn't do anything else. Uh, the other option for him is to just swipe once and then play Druid of the Claw. Because uh, it would fit Curve, he'd still be putting a body on the board as a threat. Because uh, if he swipes in Hero Powers, he'd be floating a mana. Double Swipe is also an option if he wants to take out the Vitality Totem. So That might actually be what he's looking at here. He can take out the Vitality Totem and then, yeah, swipe, swipe. face. Yeah. yeah, so that's what he's going to do. Burn both his swipes here. This is probably what that's probably one of the biggest priest boards you'll see. Yeah, swipe isn't really gonna have that much of a use. You usually use it as single target removal against priest. Uh, just because sometimes you don't even want to do one damage to a lot of the other creatures. So you'll use it as single target removal. Maybe you see a, a turn three dark cultist, you don't have a way to deal with it, so you use swipe on it. Um, but Chinese still in a pretty decent position. Uh, he he's got initiative on board, which is something that you want against a druid if you're the priest player. Uh, but Hyped has Ancient of Lore in his hand, which is pretty crucial. Man, Recombobulator is the most disgusting card against Priest because it can steal stuff and then change it and not give it back, like Shadow Madness. Yeah, uh, he was running double Shadow Madness when I watched his, when he was playing a Priest deck on his stream the other day, but I'm not sure if he's running double Shadow Madness in this deck, and that would be the only time that, um, that would be good. Second Shrinkmeister. I know he runs two Cabals. We did see two Cabals yesterday. Yeah. Uh, he has lots of options here. I mean, he can play just about everything here, but what does he want to play? He wants to probably try and protect this Thoris, and if he can. If he plays Shrinkmeister, he can play Shrinkmeister on the Ancient of Lore trade in, but. He's not going to be able to kill the low them. I think, yeah, I think you're, I think Shrinkmeister and trade and then Sludge Belcher is pretty okay. Mm -hmm. Especially if you then heal the Thorson. I would actually, eh. I'm not sure if I would heal the Thorson. Probably. Because yeah. you've seen both swipes. Uh, it's it's if you value the Thorson or the uh, Injured Blade Master more, and I suppose you would value the Injured Blade Master more. He's actually gonna he's gonna recombobulate the Thoris. <laughs> what? Um he gets, he, took... he gets a cabal shadow freeze. He just made it weaker. What? Okay, he made it weaker, but he puts three two body on the board. And this is actually the way you beat Druid. You flood the board. You make a, a big a, a bigger board than they can handle. Um I don't know, a... I'm not I'm not a fan of that. Well, I mean what is the druid gonna do? He he lothep, so he locks him out of spells. The, the only damage that you can that you can have from hand as a druid player is without you being able to use spells is druid of the claw second druid of the claw basically he just guaranteed himself a win by putting as much damage on the board as possible and playing load them um because if you think about it if he if he shrink meistered and then traded last turn like he would just put the druid in the position where the druid was dictating the pace of the board since he wouldn't be able to kill the load them so this way, he almost guarantees himself a win. I don't see any way out of the situation for Hype. Would you have, uh, would would you have preferred a Recombobulator on the Blade Master? Mm, I don't think so. Um, because the average attack for a four drop is actually less than four. Actually, no. The, I think the better play was Recombobulator the Lothab. Because you get, you still get the battle cry. And then you change it to something else, mm. and you get to keep the Thoris in effect. I think the yeah. most consistent... You would have a one-mana Shrinkmeister. That could be all important. Yeah. I think the most consistent play there is to Cabal the... the or is to recombobulate the 6-drop. Because 6-drop, you're not going to get much worse than 5. Because the average attack for a 6-drop is, is probably around 5. So anything else, he risks taking power off the board. And that's not something you want to do. You want to maximize it. He doesn't really care about the Thor's hand because he, he, after that turn, he would only have one card left in his hand. One mana Shrinkmeister. So important. So, how does he get through here? He needs to... This this six health in the Druid of the Claw is pretty annoying. If he'd picked up a second Cabal, that would have been 
definitely fill. Yeah. He can shrink Meister here and trade in a couple of his creatures and then try and go face. But he's actually one off he's one off lethal, right? Um yeah. Yeah. One off. Because he can't trade in. So um he can actually preserve his entire board here, but he won't do that much damage to face. I think he is gonna value the board here. Yeah. Yeah, using his two biggest minions. Okay. He's actually gonna just trade away the whole board and then heal. I like that. It's very difficult to deal with for the druid. Can force of nature do it? I don't think so. He can no. for, he's he can force of nature savage roar. Whirling blades on one of the the force of nature on one of the treants to kill the low of them. Um, then uses face to attack into the Cabal Shadow Priest, and then he'd only be left with he'd be at uh, six health, and the only thing that'd be left on the board is a injured blade master. So he can survive. Can he not kill the? But yeah, it's, I guess you could kill the either the blade master or the Cabal. Yeah. No, you can't kill the blade master. Can you not? <clears throat> no, you, I don't think you'd want to. You can use your face and the. On one of the treants yeah, and kill that. He, he's gonna whirling blade one of the treants and kill the um kill the Lotheb. Oh wow, he's gonna kill that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's either the injured blade master or the Cabal Shadow Priest. So He's alive, but he's in trouble. Yeah, he's a, he's in a pretty tough spot right now. Blade of the Naru is uh, not really what Chucky needs. I, don't know. I think it's pretty it's good. It's not too bad. It puts a body on the board. board. Yeah, yeah. You can make it a three attack, and then next turn, you can make it a five attack. I think you have to I think you have to go for it. That dog agrees with you, TJ. Yeah, it's a crazy dog. <laughs> yeah, so he does have seven power on the board here. Sylvanas isn't enough to do it. He can heal out of range. And potentially survive. Oh, I can't heal out of range. We can. He can heal. Yeah. Can he not? Oh, because next turn uh, he'll just heal his face, and the light one will be at five attacks. So that's nine. He can heal up to eight. Hero power for nine. Can't do it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly okay. nine damage. Uh, he has to Azure Drake into a wrath. <laughs> um, if he Azure Drakes into a wrath. Nope, he can't even do that then. No, that doesn't work. I think that's it. He has the Azure Drake into a third swipe. Azure Drake into Sludge Belcher. How many Sludge Belchers have we seen? We've only seen one Sludge Belcher, I think. We've seen one Sludge Belcher from both players. One Sludge okay. Belcher from each player, yeah. So I think that's his only out. Well, actually, yeah, if he heals Ancient of Lore, he loses because he's get if he heals himself, then it automatically brings the light warning back up. Yeah, he's dead. Chalky does it. Takes yep. the win with the priest. The initial win with priest. So uh, yeah, priest, great deck. It's going really well. Wow. And what completely turned the tides of that game was actually um, the Trickmaster Cabal Shadow Priest on the piloted shredder. That takes the wind out of the sails of the Druid. Uh, and it also builds up his board and uh, that that play in the where he flooded the board and uh, used the recombobulator on his own Ember of Thorson seems like a weird play but that's the most consistent way to get the most damage on the board um, because let's say he could ball Shadow Priest on something else let's say he could ball Shadow Priest on his Lothab and got something like a Quartermaster there's there I as far as I remember there's no six drops that actually um have that little attack you're you're mostly guaranteed to get the same or most likely more attack than what you would have with the emperor thor's hand so at the end there he was very close to being like he was points off lethal which could have changed a lot if he had recombobulated something else so uh really well played by chaki well deserved win on the priest i guess you're right and uh you know I, I, it's one of those plays where he doesn't it's not necessarily doesn't necessarily seem like the best play at the time, but uh, put the pressure on. Chucky, as I just said, known as an aggressive player. So with his, his trademark peach snapple, as he's taking a sip in between games there. <laughs> you can't see him, but... 
and every time, Snapple. every time he takes a sip of Snapple, like you, you can just see like the color come back into his face, like the you can see like his body get energized. It's like little flickers of lightning come off of his come off of his chest and off his jersey. It's, he actually telepathically communicates to the bottle, saying, "Snapple, give me your energy." Yeah, and uh, and it does, and it powers him through. That's yeah. how Chucky will survive. So Chucky's actually going to go into the warrior here, which we know is the Grim Patron Warrior, which would be very interesting. And height is going to stick with the Druid. Now, a lot of this comes down to how much of the rest of the games yesterday hypes watched. Oh, sure, he watched them all. He the only he knew he was who he was going to play. The only match he had to watch was Chucky's. So, um, um, I'm sure he he caught it at least at least some of it so he or he went back and watched the VODs when there's money on the line for these players they can take the extra hour and a half out of their day to go back and watch what the other players are playing to make sure they're prepared so at least I would hope so I would expect more from George George hyped Magazzini yeah I don't know if we could change his nameplate on the screen to George hyped Magazzini if that's possible uh, just for TJ I think you'd appreciate that so we see in the hands here, early Warstone Commander can be pretty useful to have that in your hand because that's really the key piece of, of all these combinations in making this work for the, the Grim Patron Warriors. So just having that in hand to start with can be really useful. So we may see him keep that. Um, Wrath can be pretty useful, I guess, if he throw for against things like Grim Patron. It does deal three damage. So Hype will probably keep a hold of that and, uh, and get rid of everything else. Hmm. It's a really interesting matchup for the Warrior. It's not one I've seen. I haven't seen. I've, I can't confess to have seen a lot of Grim Patron Warrior. So, uh, I'm not. What is the. Oh, the double death bite's a bit clunky. I like the double death bite. Death bite is one of your most important cards. Death bite and Grim Patron, I think, are the two. Like the two staple cards in the deck, I would say. Warsong Commander as well. So he has, like. That's all really the, good. All the pieces that he needs are there. The one thing that he has to hope is that Hype doesn't have a good early hand, which Hype does not have a good early hand. He's got combo already, no innervate, no wild growth, no creatures to play until turn six, handful of spells. Not what he wants. Definitely not what he wants. Swipe, swipe can, this can is, be such a liability. It's useless. You can use it to clear off a, a, a frothing berserker. That's it. Only use for swipe. <laughs> I'm getting too excited. You're a little bit too excited. Too. Hyped and chalky. Woo! <laughs> I'm sweating. This is what happens when we've had you casting all day, and you're inside. You don't know what time of day it is. You're going through phases. You've got a. You're going through a hyper phase right now. Yeah. Well, there's a golden Emperor Thorison in this deck. Yeah. Get a good look at that golden card. Yeah, so while, while we're waiting for these guys to sort of get going with their plays, I just have a small story to tell. Last night I actually watched the uh, new Bashy Boys documentary. Uh, <laughs> it's called Show Me What You're Made Of. They, they did their 20-year anniversary tour, which was just an in, incredible thing. And then did last you, night, last night when I was sleeping, uh, I was a little bit anxious because I knew I had to wake up early. And I actually had a dream um, about uh, myself and some popular... Uh, personalities in the Hearthstone community, we actually formed a band, like the Backstreet Boys, and we went and toured the world. I can't believe you're talking while we're watching some incredible Grim Patron play going on here. The inner fire in the Grim Patron with the whirlwind from the Death Spite. There are four Grim Patrons on board right now. Yeah. And there's also... I thought the, the Backstreet Boys, my dream about me, Crip, Raynad, Frodan, and Lothar being the Hearthstone version of the Backstreet Boys in my dream last night was more exciting, but I guess you're right. Grim Patrons are pretty cool. Uh, pretty weird looking boy band here, to be honest. Grim Patrons? Yeah. Grim Patrons, not really as good of a boy band. I don't know. How are you, dance moves? Pretty good. And Crip, uh, he played more of the Kevin figure, you know, the older Backstreet Boy. He was like the older brother. Crip was always there to, to lend us a, a helping hand and to, when our tempers got heated in our Hearthstone personality boy band, Crip was always there to, to, to keep us all in line. So I really appreciated him in my dream world. All right, well, what is Hype looking to do here? What, what can he do to, to, to really answer this? I, I don't even know. Rath, this is why you're just talking rubbish, isn't it? 
Yeah. You don't know what's going on. I know what's going on. Big Sock Chalk is just... Uh, has a really great hold in this game. Um, Maybe I can swipe here and you only leave one on the board. I'll leave two on the board. Oh, yeah, yeah, the one that's alive as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's pretty dangerous because now he can Warsong Commander and Cruel Taskmaster one of them and just go ham. Or he can, he can Cruel, Cruel Taskmaster, Taskmaster 2. Or, Cruel Taskmaster 2. Uh, but I think you want to put the Warsong Commander out there to start applying pressure. Uh, the other thing that he can do is Cruel Taskmaster 1 and develop Despite. So that's why he keeps three Grim Pages on the, on the board, uh, one being at two health and one being at full health. Um, and he has a death bite next turn to really start ramping up with the Grim Patrons. Um, but I like this, this. This is the play that I like the best because you're putting the most pressure on. Because look how much damage he's actually going to do this turn. He's going to, even his cool Taskmaster gets charged. So he's already putting hyped at 12 health. This game That's is going to be over in like a turn. This is crazy. This the Grim Patron Warrior is actually a lot stronger than people maybe even thought. A lot of people wrote it off as a gimmick deck. As maybe something that wasn't mm. uh, viable in competitive formats, but we've seen Forsen and Chucky do really well with it, and a lot of players I've spoken to have said that it's actually a lot stronger than we gave it credit for. Uh, I don't think this is a good game to sort of base that off of, uh, because Hype's hand was actually a, just really bad. He didn't have anything to play besides Wrath until turn six. Um, <laughs> Or swipe, which is just really bad in this matchup. So uh, that's actually going to be the victory for Chalky. So turn yeah. seven, already exactly over. Though. Chalky two zero lead. And my wow. my dream story was actually t actually took a path that game. So yeah, we we talked about your Backstreet Boys fantasy for half of that game. Did you attend the Backstreet Boys reunion tour? Are you a big you a big Backstreet fan? I'm a big I'm a big BSB fan, but uh, I did not attend any of their 20th anniversary shows. I actually didn't know they were doing 20th anniversary shows. This happened back in like 2013. Can't be that big a BSB fan, can you? Didn't even know they were on tour. Give me a break. What a terrible fan you are. Well, uh, we're going to go to game number three, and it's going to be obviously the Mage of Chucky. And uh, Hype's going to have another go with his Druid. Yeah, Hype drinking an ominous uh, black liquid from his mug, which you guys can't see. I'm assuming it's coffee. But he's just trying to one up Chalky, who uh, has been powering up with his Snapple. Chalky actually uh, he orders he orders so much Snapple online directly from Snapple that Snapple has started to custom make the Snapple facts on the top of the caps just directly for Chalky. They've started putting facts about Chalky's own life under the Snapple caps that they sent to Chalky. That's terrifying. Fun fact. No, Chucky loves the... it. It's sort of like a like a narcissistic motivational tool for him. Like every time, right before he's about to go into a match, he takes a Snapple, opens it up, looks at the cap, sees a great fact about his life. Like, in high school, Chucky graduated with a 3.9 GPA, and Chucky's like, yeah, damn right I did. And then he goes into the game, and it just gives him that little boost that he needs to, uh, the little confidence that he needs to sort of just take a hold of, of his game. So it looks like we are jumping into the game. Chucky just needs one win with the freeze mage we see hogger in the druid for hype there that's something you don't see too often it was a period where hogger was quite popular in warrior but it's uh not card as i say you see too often but uh you did mention i, I that does sound like it sounds like the premise of a really really terrible like uh self self-published horror film is you go to the shop buy about the snapple open the fact and it's a fact about you or even or, or even worse like if it was a horror film but like you're gonna, you will die tomorrow from the Snapple, the Snapple killer. <laughs> That's how we get you. Yeah. So what you're saying is Snapple needs to hire me as part of their marketing team. You know what, Cal? I'm saying, I agree. I, I thought it was some really terrible Snapple movie ideas. That's all I'm saying. So freeze mage. <laughs> this is a um, really good hand for him because he's got a lot of draws. He's got arcane intellect. Uh, plus he has the. Um, Acolyte of Pain. So he's going to be able to draw quite a bit. Uh, Wrath is pretty good. Uh, you'd say, Hey, Chucky, why did you play Acolyte of Pain instead of Arcane Intellect? I think he played Acolyte of Pain. I'm trying to see into the mind of Chucky here because he wants to try and bait out the Shade Hit here. Um, he wants the, the Druid to sort of try and deny him a draw by throwing out the Shade uh, into the Acolyte of Pain, which would allow him to trade into it with the Mad Scientist. So some people would say, Well... You're playing Acolyte of Pain, you're only getting one draw out of it, that's not the best, but 
Uh, one, since he has Acolyte of Pain, plus the coin, there's a chance that he'll overdraw uh, with Acolyte of Pain if he plays it when he has a bigger hand. And two, he wants to bait out that shade. I can see another golden coin there for Chucky. All golden deck. Very important. Yeah. He plays a lot. Fortunately, he plays fortunately a lot Double Wrath. Double Wrath for Hype is going to be able to deal with this Acolyte. And in fact, the Mad Scientist as well. I kind of like this. I don't think there aren't many targets in the deck for your spells like Wrath. Yeah, that's true. It's going to be tougher for him to deal with Doomsayers. Speaking of. <clears throat> Speaking of Doomsayer. Yeah. So it's Ice Block on the secret there. I actually like uh, seeing the, the Doomsayer here. Uh, you, straight up? Yeah, you've seen both You've seen both Wraths. Um, turn six, uh, he could force of nature and trade in with the, the shade. Um, he could also swipe and, and trade in, in with the shade. Either way, the shade's coming out of stealth if you play Doomsayer, mo more than likely. Um, so after here, I can intellect here and, and sort of... Well, I don't know. Doomsayer feels good, but now that he's drawn into Archmage Antonidas, having that coin uh, is sort of like a free fireball. His yeah. decision here is basically, do I coin out Doomsayer or do I turn that coin into a fireball later on? And he opts for door number two. That means he's going to see Hogger. And Hogger could help this board get out of control here, but I think Chucky has some ways to, to help with that little infestation problem. I never thought I'd hear that. Hogger is going to make this board get out of control. I'm curious. I'm, I'm trying to think uh, why Hogger is teched in here. Um, the six drop slot is already really full. Emperor Thorson, uh, Sylvanas, uh, Force of Nature, and Druid. There's a lot of six drops already, and six drops can be really clunky. We saw in the last game, you get stuck with six drops in your hand, you might just lose against faster decks. Um, Hogger is really great if it's not dealt with on, on the turn that it's played. Uh, six power represented on board is uh, immediately is pretty decent for a six drop. It probably deals with Zoo pretty well, but I'm not sure what other purposes it serves. Hunter yeah, I think also. it's 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 pretty nice anti aggro attack. Yeah, I like it. It's just so slow. Six mana, jeez. I think you just had a bad experience with the tutorial, TJ. That's why you're biased against Hogger. Yeah, yeah. Hogger actually beat me like 50 times. I can never wow, figure out how to deal with that hero power. Explosive Sheep and Doomsayer. He's, he's double dipping. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. Guess it's going to deal with these Hogger tokens, but... <clears throat> you think Doomsayer would probably deal with them anyway. I'm, I don't know. I guess when else are you going to get to use the Explosive Sheep and he's just trying to give himself some extra insurance? Yeah, he's basically u <clears throat> using the Doomsayer as a heal and using this explosive sheep as insurance for his flame strike because flame strike wouldn't clear the shade by itself but with an explosive sheep on the board he could do two damage he actually buys himself two turns to be able to safely use flame strike and reliably be able to take out the shade so this is solid play from chucky i like it if you think like about it though chucky. It is nearly almost his only play, besides fireballing the the hogger or using arcane intellect and risk not having anything else to play and maybe overdrawing. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, the sheep goes down. I see another hogger token come out, but it's going to be inconsequential. Can coin the flame strike, but as you said, probably wants to save that coin for Antonidas. I don't know. Uh, I think this is... You're not going to really find a, an opportunity. His hand is too full. Uh, he it's needs true. to be able to deal with the damage that's on the board now. He can't have his his uh, block popped that early. Mm, loot Hoarder. See? His 6-drop slot is just so stacked. I'm sure he, he runs Thoris on as well. Plus Toshley and Hogger. That's, yeah, that's a lot of 6-drops. Where does he find the mana? It's like he's pulling mana from nowhere. It's a, this is one of those times where you, you you sometimes do see players like this and you think, are they playing a 40-card deck? It's have, so... they found a, have they found a way to play 40 cards and I just haven't realized it? It's so greedy. So greedy. Come on, George. <laughs> Come on, George. <laughs> don't be greedy, George. Uh, there's a possibility that he might have cut Thoris on. I don't remember seeing it so far in the series, but... Yeah. 
So what is Chucky looking at here? Arcane it's got intellect. Arcane in yeah, Arcane Intellect. And then see where we go from there, <clears> I guess. Actually, um, Fireball and Ping on the, the Dr. Boom might be the... Let's see. If he Arcane Intellects and doesn't draw into anything that prevents damage, uh, will Savage Roar pop the block? Uh, he has 10, 11 damage on board plus 10, so it'd be 21. Not quite. And he actually does have an... Oh, I know it's Ice Block up, so... He's gonna use Frostbolt <clears throat> Ice Lance to clear it instead of Fireball Ping. Yeah. It's Oops. the same damage, just Frostbolt Ice Lance is actually harder... is a harder combo to pull off. It's less mana. Is it no better for, for Antonidas, though? Well, also, he wouldn't, ha he wouldn't have had mana to... Um, to play anything else at the end of that turn as well, because uh, Fireball Ping is six mana. That would have been his whole turn. This way, he he plays the uh, Acolyte of Pain as well. So it's not quite as flexible having Fireballs in your hand. It's a little bit more clunky, but just Fireball Pinging to avoid the seven damage from the Doctor Boom is a pretty weak turn. What do you think about the switch here on the Acolyte of Pain to deny the draw? That feels pretty good. Yeah. Deny one draw. Hey, but... Deny two draws. Potentially. Mm. I think he would... I don't think he would ever... He would ever get three draws from the Acolyte. True. I get with the loot hoarder, I guess. Yeah. Um, he's trying to think, am I going to need that reversing switch later on? Uh, but I don't think so. Also, what this does is make sure that the one of this Boombot's damage is definitely going to go face... Um, Check, he's not pleased with that, you can see. Oh, he hero powered it. That's weird. Yeah. He, I would think he'd want to build up armor and put that extra damage on face with that second boom bot. It's really interesting. Hmm. The, that, well, every said... point of armor matters. Oh, there's a blizzard. So that's going to freeze the board. There's Frost Nova as well for delay. Hmm. I kind of like Frost over here because then you can knock in Intellect as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can ping off the Loot Hoarder. I think that's probably the best. Even though the sort of conventional wisdom is that you uh, you want to play your higher cost free spells before the lower cost if you can. Draw, freeze, burn. You had Arcane Intellect first. I don't think there's any reason why you wouldn't. Oh, there's Frost Nova Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Top decked and wrecked. Uh, the one thing that, that Chucky's looking for, though, is Alexstrasza. Um, he needs to draw into the Alexstrasza because otherwise he's not going to really he's not going to really have a way to sort of burst through. He can use uh, Archmage Antonidas as a way. Oh wow! He can actually. Yeah, he can kill this Doomsayer now with Swipe and Druid of the Claw. I was thinking he could force nature hero power. But well, Swipe Druid of the Claw would develop board better, and having a Force Nature in your hand uh, to threaten Block Poppage might block be the better poppage. answer. It's a really tough choice, because how how useful is Swipe? Swipe <laughs> is useful in a situation where you're trying to play around Ice Barrier when you're trying to pop lethal, but it's not going to be a valuable when you're trying to get a board. So I think in this situation, Force of Nature is... Um, Holding on to Force Nature is more important than holding on to Druid of the Clone Swipe. Yeah. Good to be able to deal with this Doomsayer. I'm, I'm looking at this damage oh. here. Oh, Flame Strike. God. The tippity oh. top. I was just about to calculate how much damage Hyped got, but uh, yeah. I don't think there's any point in me calculating that anymore. Yeah, Blizzard here. Um, Blizzard and then a ping on the Toshley. Probably going to be the play. Um... Because if he just flame strikes here, then uh, there's a chance uh, with the bombs doing a lot of damage that he can pop block. And yeah. this way, there's no way that he can pop the block this turn, even with... Oh! Barely! That's super fortunate. If that bomb had hit one more, and he could pop the block next turn, that'd be pretty disastrous for Chucky. Oh, there's Thorison! What the? How is he running this many six drops? That's crazy. I, I am flabbergasted. <laughs> Why is he running this many six drops? That's insane. Okay. He puts himself on Savage Roar to pop the block. All right, so let's take stock of where we are right now. Um, Chucky is actually, uh, ooh. 
I think you still flame strike here. You flame strike ping. I don't think so. I think you arc mage, arc mage and frost nova. Mm, yeah, I, I guess when you can build up the fireballs, that's yeah. pretty good. It's not only the fireballs, but it's also the five damage on board. Chances. Oh, uh, not quite. How much damage does he have? Uh, he can do twelve damage. I think is the maximum that that he can do. Yeah. Um, so he's in trouble. Because Chucky's just going to start fl chaining f fireballs, I think. Next turn, Chucky can fireball, fireball, and hit face for 17 damage. Uh, put him at 10, and then he'll have fireballs for the next turn. So he would be on an Ancient of War draw, and he also has Ice Block to buy himself another turn. So this is this is really, really dangerous for, for Hyped. You can use the same technique as before with the swipe and the Druid of the Claw, but then the Druid of the Claw is just going to die to Flame Strike. Yeah. Um, Which he has to know is, is a potential. Yeah. There's a couple ways that he can go about it. He can put the Druid of the Claw in Taunt form to block the to block some of the damage. It would take six damage from the Fireball from the next turn. Um, but I, taking out the Archmage might be the better option here. I think you just need to stop the fireball chain from coming. Yeah, yeah that's what he's going to do. Yeah. So flame strike is going to come down pretty much guaranteed. But Hyde can pop the block with combo, but then what does he have left? This is looking pretty difficult. This is actually going to take some some thinking here if he wants to flame strike. Okay. No. Either way, I don't think there's a way that he can protect himself from getting his block popped. If he flame strike ice barriers here, it's gonna leave Emperor Thorasan on board. Um, so yeah, either way, combo uh, pops his block. Oh, I think oh, it's such a dead draw. Yeah, you can see hyped. I said before he's not an emotional player, but you can see there the very subtle shaking of his head when he drew into that big game hunter instead of Saboteur. Uh, which is, he probably saw that three drop and he got a little bit excited. He's he's trying to think whether or not he needs to save this big gun game hunter for Alex Shaza, but at this point, he just needs to put whatever he can on the board. Yeah, but he's really not happy. He knows he's in a terrible position, which is so funny. It's one of those, Freeze Mage is just such a weird deck that you get your opponent to 11 health, you're at 29. Oh, but there's Alex Straza. Okay. Oh, that's going to be so brutal if that comes down right now. Let's look at hyped space. See, a subtle shaking of the head is, is all it gives. Um, that's really rough. He's gonna Let's have to he's gonna have to force a nature here just to kill yeah. the Alex Exactly. He's not dead. But it's looking very grim. Because Chalky can chain fireballs this turn. Or actually Power Blast might even be the better choice. Yeah, I like Power Blast. Power Blast gives him a more flexible following turn. Yeah. Oh, God, that's... Wow, I saw he's the one... whites of Hype's eyes. That was actually scary. He's one mana off one damage, and one damage off being able to pop the block. Even if he wasn't worried about dying, he's, he couldn't pop the block that turn. Yeah. Power Blast. Easy Power Blast. Yeah, and at that point, Hype knows this game is over. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Chucky gonna take a 3-0 victory over Hyped. Wow, that's a little bit rough, but hyped concedes. That's really impressive stuff. And I said the the key to that series was Chalky taking game number one with the priest, because if he had, um, even if he managed to win those two games like he did, trying to beat trying to beat the other decks with his priest would have actually been really hard. So um, the key to that was was definitely that first match. Uh, Chalky played that really well. Um, and unfortunately, Hyped is going to be out. It, it really sucks to go out 3-0, but uh, Chucky's on fire right now. Yeah, and Chucky's going to play Jab tomorrow in our first semifinal. Uh, so that's going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be starting at 5 p.m. CET. I've been corrected. So it's a little bit later for you there, TJ. Okay. It's like 9 a.m. your time. That's practically reasonable Okay. for Sunday. It's relatively reasonable. Yeah, Chucky getting a 3-0 victory. This could be a big deal for Chucky. Chucky is a guy who doesn't really have any 
significant wins to his record. He has been around a long time, but this could be the first major title for him. Uh, came very, very close to the ESL Legendary Series LAN Finals, coming second to Silent Storm. And uh, he's looked on fire today, and that Gurm Patron Warrior is really working out for him. Yeah, he, he... That take is really fun to watch as well. We saw Forsen with it earlier, with the commanding shot vers uh, version, but um, it, it can have those explosive starts where you just absolutely decimate your opponent if you get the right draws, and there's it feels like there's nothing they can do, especially Druid, who's... Removal is very dependent on either wrathing a single target or swiping a board. And sometimes swipe actually puts more power on. So really fun stuff to watch. I'm looking forward to seeing Chucky tomorrow. Absolutely. Well, we are going to move on to our third quarterfinal after a short break. And it's going to be, for me, actually, probably the pick of the quarterfinals, I think. Tides of Time versus Gara, Two former Temple Storm teammates. Tides of Time, of course, moving over to Cloud9 late last year. Uh, two players with a lot of pedigree behind them. It's going to be really exciting to see how these two match up. But we're going to take a quick break now, and then we'll be back with that quarterfinal, Tides versus Gara. Remember to enter the raffle while you're... Uh, while you're waiting you can type exclamation mark packs i remember to donate to the charity as well donate to child's play that's what we're here for so there's a link down below you can donate to child's play help us raise money for games and consoles for kids with cancer and in hospital and things like that uh we've raised so much money already but we can always raise more so make sure you give us a donation we'll be back in i think it's eight minutes so we'll see you then with our next quarter final don't go anywhere you're watching kingwin for charity easter